improvised hooks. Now I made this little card with just some improvised hooks. This is a toggle, and we're going to talk a little bit about toggles. This is also a toggle made for some smaller fish, and it's just made out of a piece of river cane. It can also be made out of hardwood or any other type of wood. This is just a little small hook made out of a, uh, a paper clip. I'm going to show you how to do that one really quick. And this is out of a can. Just pull it out to where you can see it. Just a uh, pull top on a, on, a, uh, on a can. And this is a straight pin. It can also be made very easily out of a safety pin. Now this one's a little large, but it could still work, especially if you had a way to trim this off. And you could just tie into the top. So let's look at an improvised hook really quick. And I'll show you one that I've got rigged up already to go. This is a toggle. And all it is is just a little piece that has been sharpened on both ends. Now I'll offset this just a hair. Now you can also make these out of bone, metal, whatever, you know, something that's hard enough that's going to turn. The whole principle behind this hook is kind of twofold. What happens is, I've just got a little grasshopper here, and you're going to bait this thing by inserting the grasshopper straight in, just like so. You're going to have it cover almost the entire body of that grasshopper. But what happens is, as the fish swallows the bait, this toggle turns as the fish pulls. Let's use this ring for an example. This, fit, this hook will actually turn, and it gets lodged in a fish's mouth, and it will lodge pretty good in there. We'll catch some fish on these and I'll show you. Now, the principle behind just a paperclip hook is a pretty easy thing to do. As you can see, you need a multi-tool to do this. And I'm just going to take my paperclip off here. And you'll end up with two hooks out of this. And I'm going to show you a couple little tricks that you can do. You're going to cut it right here in this middle part. And now we have basically two hooks. Now this is going to be a little long. And what I like to do is actually cut this on an angle using my multi-tool. And that kind of creates a little bit of an edge there. Now all you have to do to the top part is you can roll it forward or you can roll it backwards. I like to roll them backwards. It keeps away from the bait. But I just take the very tip of my multi-tool and roll this around a couple of times. You want at least a complete loop around on it and I like to go around a couple of times as you can see on this one. So the next thing that I want to do is to come in here and I want to sharpen this hook a little bit. Now Let's say you don't have a multi-tool. You can actually take your fingers and bend this around. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can actually bend this. You can take a rock, bend this however you need it. You can bend this out. This is going to catch all kinds of fish. Brim, uh, small fish, and that's what you're going to be going for in a stream like this. Now the next thing I like to do is I like to give it just a little bit of an offset. Uh, and you could do it with your fingers, you can do it with your multi-tool and just bend that hook just a tiny bit and give this hook a bit of an offset. This is a super easy one to make and this is just a pop can. Now I have seen them where they just cut this bottom off a little bit but I've always found that it doesn't really work very good. The fish, they'll take it but a lot of times you lose a lot of fish if you just have this thing turned the normal way in this direction here and just kind of cut this loose and use this to tie on. I found that the fish a lot of times they get off a lot. I'm saying probably 9 out of 10 will actually get off of this. But if you turn it the other direction, you just take this, cut it off, spin this completely around and if you have the luxury of a multi-tool you can actually crimp this down a little bit and as you can see I cut this to a point it's hard to see it, I think, on camera, but this actually kind of cuts back a little bit and gives me a little bit of a barb. Now, I can tie this in with natural cordage or other types of string. Now, as far as just a straight pin, if you have, happen to have a straight pin on you, it's just a small hook. 
and you're just basically bend the hook around. You're going to tie the, the line right around this a few times, pull it up, especially if you have the you know fishing line. Uh, it makes it a little harder with natural cordage. Also, this is another way that you can do a hook. Now you can whittle this completely out and sharpen it up. You can even put a little barb on here, even drill a hole in it or however, just tie it on directly. Cut this off and have a pretty decent little hook there. Today's fishing, we're going to use toggles, we're going to use the paper clips, and we're going to try the aluminum can piece. Now this little puppy was caught on a toggle. It is perfectly viable to catch these fish on a toggle hook. It's just a little brim, a little bluegill. And a little bit smaller than the other one that I caught. But this is on a, uh, a line and a toggle hook. Bent paper clip. This is not a very good big bluegill. Now here's another little brim caught on a toggle. These are really pretty fish. Good sized fish. Good eating. Big mud turtle there. This is a rock bass. Wow, he just barely hooked. That is just how easy he got hooked right there. Look at that. Look how easy that just came out. Really with a barb on that, it's going to be essential really to keep these things from, from flipping loose. But they're beautiful fish. Absolutely beautiful fish. And he's a keeper. And that's going to be my dinner tonight right there. Test it here a little bit. Oh yeah, look at this. You can eat that skin if you want to. But look how flaky this is. Just absolutely just flaking apart. So guys, this is Darren. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the woods.